Hi, my name is Jennifer Pigeon of Sundance Media Group. Today we're going to take a look at how to edit the dual video file system stream of the ET camera. Let's take a look. I'm going to take just a moment and show you how to edit the footage that comes off the Seago ET camera. For this particular exercise, we're going to be using a tool that is called Vegas. It's available from magics.com. You can see the address here where you can download a free 30-day trial piece. So after you've installed the software, this is the interface that you'll come across. Now this area down here is called the timeline, and this is where we'll be doing our work. So we're going to look for a tab that says Explorer. So we'll click on the Explorer tab and move up to the folder that's got some of your footage in it. If we've got this small switch up here enabled, it says turn off, turn off audio preview play. When we click on a file, it will automatically begin to play that file inside this uh, playback window here. Now you won't see the thermal footage at first and that's okay. So we'll stop our preview. We're going to click and drag that footage down to the timeline. We can put it anywhere we'd like to put it. I'm just going to butt it up against the head of the timeline here. It's going to ask us if we want to match our product project settings to match the media. We can say yes. I recommend you not uh, choose the always based project video settings. So now we can see our footage that comes down and we've got three different tracks of video. This first one at the very bottom is an audio track and we don't need to use that because we haven't recorded audio with the Seago ET. So let's just right click and choose delete track. Now we've got these two left. Now as we place our cursor over top of the media we can see the ET footage right there on top. It's very, very simple. There's some things that we can do with it. So if this is the piece that we want, let's let's select another piece of video here. So we'll just go through and look at a couple. Right, so this is the most simplified way that we can view footage from our Seago ET camera. Now if your computer is slower, we'll want to go up here to where it says best full. And we're going to change this to preview auto. This allows the even a slow computer to be able to play back footage fairly well. Now see in this particular palette that Brian's chosen we can see that there's quite a heat source happening right here at the generator stand. Alright, that looks great. And that's all there is to doing a really to doing a basic read of the content that comes off the ET. So we've got a couple of pieces here. But there's more that we can do with this application if we want to mimic exactly what happens inside the uh, ST16 itself. So a couple things we can do. For example, maybe we'd like to make this section become a picture-in-picture. Picture. That's fairly easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this event pan crop button that you see here. When we click on this, it opens up with this this uh, piece of uh, information that shows us what the timeline or, or what's on the timeline, what it looks like. I'm going to grab this little diamond and move it off to the side. This is called a keyframe. This is the same thing as a waypoint. This identifies a particular behavior at a particular point in time. Move this down out of the way so we can see what's going on. Now currently it's zoomed in pretty deep and we can see an awful lot happening there. What we're going to do is go into the zoom tool. You can see the zoom tool right here under workspace and let's make that workspace just a little bit easier to see. Then we're going to grab and drag that file until it fills up a quarter of our screen and then we're just going to move it up into that upper corner until we start to see it disappear just like we would see if it was on the ST16 just like that. Okay, So now what we've done is we've moved that footage up into that upper corner just like it would be with the ST16. You see it's still got the full motion. So everything's exactly the same. And we can do that the other way too. So if we were to right click this and choose copy, come down here to our uh, RGB track, we'll choose paste event attributes, now it does the same thing. And we're going to go back to this track. We're going to open up the, uh, the, the track motion tool. And we're going to come down here to this little waypoint. Right click and choose restore. And now we've got the full picture there. The problem is, is now that now our RGB footage is in the back. So what has to happen is we need to put this on top 
and now we've got the other view that we get out of the ST16. So that's the simplest way overall to use it. Now if we want to output it, how do we output it? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to double click our footage or we'll just make a selection that's the size of the footage. So we're going to click and drag to make a selection that's the same size as our video stream that we'd, we'd like to show overall. Okay, so once we've got that, then we're going to go up to File and Render. And it's going to give us a whole bunch of choices. Now my Mine sets up a little bit differently because I've been using it. Yours is going to look something more like this. We're going to go into main concept and we're going to choose one of the presets. I recommend something like the Sony Tablet 720p or the Sony Tablet 1080p. And then we're going to give our file a name and we'll call this ET Test Render and choose Render. It'll take it a few minutes to render. And now our video has finished rendering. We'll just click open. This will open it up inside of our Windows Media Player. And just like that, we've got a complete video. Thanks for watching. My name is Jennifer Pigeon of Sundance Media Group. Be sure to check us out at sundancemediagroup.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel.